since I've collected the car to actually get this video out, but it's been a combination of pretty terrible weather, events like Goodwood, driving a Formula E car, all of these things have got in the way of me making this. But we're here, we're finally in the car, and all importantly, we've ran it in. It's now over 600 miles, in fact, since I did that 600 miles on the drive down to Goodwood, we're at 1,200 miles. So, where do I begin? Well, let's backtrack quickly for those of you who might be watching this content for the first time. This was not supposed to happen. This is totally left field. I was very kindly invited out to Tenerife uh, about four or five weeks ago by McLaren to test drive the 570 GT. Phenomenal experience, best press day I've ever been to. Uh, they had us driving these cars effectively up the side of a volcano. I don't know how you sort of top that, but the following day I had to extend my uh, stay an extra day and therefore my flight got moved and, and I had a whole day free to myself. McLaren took pity and said, here you go, here's the keys to a 675 LT Spider, off you go. And I'd never driven one. I'd been around Tim's, aka Schmee's. I'd driven on road trips with his. Hell, I even went to collect it with him. I accompanied him in the F12, but I'd never driven one. And to be honest, I honestly don't think anyone had done a good enough job of conveying how phenomenal that car was. No offense, Tim. Um, but no one had sort of got, it hadn't got under, under their skin and it hadn't come out on camera just what the hell McLaren have done with this car. When they launched it, the press drives were on track. Only a few people actually got to experience it behind the wheel and everyone else got to experience it uh, being driven, albeit by Bruno Senna. So if you're gonna be driven by someone, that's pretty good. But when you drive this thing for yourself, it infects you and you need to see my video of when I first experienced it. I'll put it below. I'm gonna put this out there and I can say this because, you know, I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I pretty much said this before I, I bought one. This is probably the best car I've ever driven. Now, I've experienced P1, uh, I've experienced 918. 918 I haven't driven for myself, but where do you go from here? I, it, you have to be, the next step from this car is hypercar. And okay, these things are crazy expensive, even more so now that their they're premiums are so much. But the next level from here is a totally different ball game. You're gonna have to go eight, nine hundred thousand pounds to get in anything like the performance or experience of this thing. I've said it before, I'll say it again. The LT is closer to McLaren P1 experience than it is to 650S. I know that sounds crazy because essentially this is a tuned up 650S, but this thing is greater than the sum of its parts. It's absolutely mental. So let's just re recap what it's all about. So it's 100 kilograms lighter than a 650S. It's 666 brake horsepower, the number of the beast. And that translates to uh, 675 PS, hence the name. Uh, LT meaning long tail. It isn't actually that much longer. When the air brake comes up, the air brake is actually wider. So it hasn't been extended as much as it has uh, widened by 50%. And when you anchor on those brakes, damn do you know it. It is honestly, it's like someone's thrown out a small parachute. You anchor on under hard braking. Uh, obviously, brakes bite first, shed off that initial pace, and then the big wing comes up. <laughs> that extra you know you feel it in your body it is easy to dismiss active aero as a bit of a gimmick because it's nice to see all these animated flaps and stuff but McLaren being McLaren they do this because it works it is a joy to experience aerodynamics actually working and you don't have to get crazy speeds to feel it I love this thing now one of the things that I think dominates the whole experience is the engine. The engine mated with the drivetrain is a thing to behold. I'm going to start bringing along a thesaurus with me uh, to keep it in my glove box because the words that I use for this car are next level, gobsmacking, or I haven't the words. I don't know what to say. You know, awesome doesn't do it justice. It's, it is out of a category that I'm glad we have the medium of film for me to convey to you what's going on. They say a picture says a thousand words. I need 60 frames per second in order to get through to. Let's just, let's just do this. Okay, it's not a whale 
tail, but it look boom, it looks like one. It's just drama filled. It's the most dramatic modern day car that I've driven. You know, if you want to go and get something that's going to sort of set you alight because you think it's going to kill you, then, you know, the older school stuff, the F40s, things in that realm, you know, don't get me wrong, that's a different kind of drama. But in terms of sort of surgical tool that will recalibrate your, your appreciation of what a modern day supercar is capable of, I don't know where you kind of go from here. It's, it's next level, different gravy. And in my LT Spider video in Tenerife, there was a moment where I'd given up with the descriptions because I honestly believed what was going on in my facial expressions did a better job of letting you know what this thing was all about. So anyway, the, the sort of last time that I drove one of these was on the volcanic island of Tenerife. And now I'm back in the motherland on our fabulous British roads. Yeah, thankfully the drivetrain and suspension on this can be adjusted independently because when you're on some of these country roads in England, uh, yeah, not great. I'm well aware that the first time I drove this car was on the glassy asphalt of Tenerife and God was that fantastic. What else was amazing? And I think this is actually the greatest modern day trick, is to make these cars feel fantastic even when you're not going that fast. So despite this thing being ballistic, on tight country roads, it's addictive because the power band is such that there isn't this turbo lag that you would have had of old turbo cars. It's always there for you. It's always ready to stick your kidneys in the back of these carbon back seats and reprogram your mind. For instance, let's just uh, dial this up here. Traction control off. And it sort of skips along bumps. It takes off on little crests. Crests that otherwise wouldn't be crests because you wouldn't normally approach them or accelerate over them at that kind of pace. This thing turns crests and bumps into little events. It sort of hops and skips and like flirts over it. And the traction management, I think Dumbledore must have been involved in these. He, he definitely got involved in some serious wizardry because it doesn't hold you back. Once you've put the ESC to off, and I'm finding ESC as well is a, is a little bit more like M dynamic mode in the BMW 1M. That was designed to let you play, let the traction break loose, but it just catches you before the moment of no return, which in the 1M was nice, but in 660 brake horsepower is essential, because uh, I, I really like living. Uh, this thing, this thing will, will end you fast. That fast. Oh God. responsibility. They shouldn't really just give these to people. I honestly think, say you were to one day and was like, I'm gonna go out and buy my first supercar. Um, I honestly think there should be a waiver for this thing. You need to sign uh, before just jumping in it and getting on it. The way this thing sends you up the road, I would imagine is some Neil Armstrong shit. It's just... I mean, I have to kind of on earth! I, you have to stop talking and concentrate on this thing. <laughs> so yes, lots planned with this car. There will be road trips. The next thing this has to do is go to Monaco. I've got to take it through the Alps because I truly believe that's where you get the most out of a car. You really understand the chassis dynamics and the way this thing throws you out of a corner on tight alpine switchbacks, it's just gonna squat you down, fly you out, on the brakes, back in, just great. And to see the rear wing working as well, it's forever tweaking and changing depending on, you know, throttle depression, depending on steering angle, brake depression. It's drama after drama in this thing. One of this thing's greatest party tricks is the way it pops on upshifts. Let's see if we can just, down a little bit so not to buffer too much. See if we can just 
interesting I mean it's probably because I haven't been driving it as hard as maybe you should in order to get that that kind of drama out of it but I didn't notice when I first had it that it was popping on the downshift as well but the fact that it pops on up and downshift absolutely smile inducingly fabulous <laughs> Honestly, I tell you something, these guys have come a long way in a very short amount of time. Let's see if we can do that again. You ready? Oh, that was a little double one. What was I gonna do? Ba-boom! <laughs> As I always say with these things, these days, there isn't really a bad supercar. You know, technology has evolved so much, companies have evolved so much that these days there isn't a bad car, it's not a bad supercar. But for me, it's all about the one that makes you smile. If it makes you smile a lot, win. Right, let me just hold that thought there a minute because we have a little tunnel, a very, very small one. Let's see if we can make it pop in there. Are we ready? It's probably not coming through on there, just how loud that is. One more time. What? What? Oh, good Lord, Woking. Whoever thought Woking could be so exciting. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. We're gonna be planning some trips with this very soon and hopefully uh, in the, the next few months as well, we might even get the LT down to Monte Carlo up in the Alps and get some proper hot asphalt tight twisty turn action. Until next time guys, thanks for watching. Ciao!